on the agenda today. This is the kind of the feature lineup for 10.12 uh, that we'll be covering today. So most of these are obviously not new features. We've had these in prior releases, but what we have done is extended a lot of these features to the new platforms, and uh, we'll show those as we go through the slides. Okay, so first up, um, so for Mac set capable ports, uh, you can see what we've done with the 6200M with the 10.12 release. Uh, we've extended support not only to the uplink ports that you see that that's pretty typical, but we've also support we also now support um, uh, host to switch downlink ports with MacSec on the smart rate ports uh, 37 through 48. And then just as a comparison to what we provide on the 6300, um, so we we have a lot more um, port uh, counts available, you know, for the downlink ports on the 6300. Uh, and so what these allow you to do is to connect to devices that are, aren't necessarily switch to switch connections. They could be switched to server connections that support MacSec. And so from MacSec's perspective, um, you know, it's a security, you know, mechanism. Obviously, it protects against a range of attacks, as you can see here, denial of service, intrusion, man in the middle, et cetera. This is a uh, nothing new uh, in point to point encryption at the data link layer. And just a, a note as well, so uh, uplink MacSec ports, they can also connect the host ports where appropriate. There's nothing really different about the uplink um, MacSec support as opposed to the downlink. It's just a matter of, of what devices that they're connecting to. Okay, and moving on. So with the, the 6200M and the 9300 platforms, we now also support the static VXLAN tunnel. Uh, 6200M released with AOS CX 1011 one. Uh, 005, and then uh, with the 10.12 release, we now support static VXLAN with the 9300. And so what it does, you know, um, it's basically allows you to, to provide uh, tunnels between, you know, two different VTEPs in the environment. So you can see at the bottom here, we're tunneling traffic from one VTEP to another using just static VXLAN support. Um, and so this is definitely required for the 6200M because it doesn't support uh, BGP natively. So you can't have eVPN configurations for, say, Mac learning. It all has to be kind of basically flood and learn with static VXLAN. And so this is the configuration you'd expect to see there where you've got basically two different VLANs here with the VTEP peer assignments um, that affect the configuration and set up the tunnels. So in an eVPN world, you wouldn't have any of these VTEP peer uh, arguments available at all. In addition on the 6200M as well with 10.12, we now also support group-based policy. Uh, so this is, a, again, nothing new. It's feature been around for quite some time with the VNBT. And so roles can be mapped to group policy IDs that get inserted into the VXLAN header for policy enforcement purposes. So you can kind of, kind of see an example here for, on the 6200M. We've, we've identified different roles for contractors and employees for setting uh, group policy IDs 101 and 102. And that allows you to be able to restrict access, even at this, even on the same VLAN as you can see down here below. They're they're both in VLAN 12, but you can restrict access between employees and contractors between these two VF, VTEPs in a VXLAN world. And moving on to private VLANs, um, so we didn't have full support for all the platforms with private VLANs prior to 10.12, and we. Still don't, in, but we have extended support to most of the platforms. So existing platforms of 62, 63, 64, as you see here, and then um, with 10.12, we now also have support for 8100, 6100, 6000, and the 4100i. And the platforms that still don't support it, as you can see, are the 8320, the 8400, and the 9300. And the feature basically allows you to take a primary VLAN and partition it out into uh, several sub VLANs for security purposes, and um, that's basically what it does. And this matrix just kind of further identifies the scale as in terms of what's supported on those platforms, uh, in terms of uh, whether the feature supported, as I just mentioned, and then also the number of primary VLANs and secondary VLANs that can be specified uh, in the environment. And moving on, so IP lockdown. So with 10.12, we've also added support for the 8325 and the 10K. Both V4 and the V6 are supported, and the feature is there to prevent IP source address spoofing on the switchboard. 
And the configuration is very straightforward. It basically creates a binding table that you match against, and you just go into the interface, and then you enable the IPv4 source lockdown feature, as you can see enabled here. And moving on to our protection, uh, so we've added support with 10.12 for the 8360. And so our protection are by itself is not secure, so you need mechanisms to be able to um, secure against it for the common uh, cases that you see here, where you can overwhelm switch control claim with too many uh, nefarious R packets, you know, too many unresolved data packets that don't correspond to a specific you know, IP address, and then masquerading as a trusted gateway or server by wrongly advertising the ARBs. And so you can see this feature support that we have across the product lines. And for configuration purposes, it's very simple. You just go in, <coughs> excuse me, within the interface or VLAN context, and you specify that you enable ARP inspection. And then you set up different trust ports, and the trust ports identify which um, ports will be inspecting the ARP, pa ARP packets as they come into the network. And moving on again, so multicast ECMP with the AOS CX1012, we now include uh, ECMP support for the 6200. And where multicast traffic is shared across the ECMP links when multiple sources are available, and it's on by default. There's no specific configuration required, and the current support is as of 10.12 in the matrix that you see below. So what it looks like under the hood is basically you can see down here we've got multicast receivers uh, connected to, to the R1 router uh, device, you know, with, with multicast streams coming up here at the sources with S1 and S2. So without the ECMP operation, so these are routed links, and you can see that the uh, traffic tends to try to bind to one direction over another. So you can see in this case, it's not really ideal, right? You've got the traffic flow coming down, only going through R2 to reach R1. <clears throat> With the feature enabled, we'll move on to the next slide, and you'll see that there's, there's much better distribution as to the traffic flows, and they can come through either R2 or R3, which provides you, you know, just much better uh, resiliency in the environment. An additional enhancement we have with 10.12 is now we support uh, event logs for control plane ACEs. So we didn't really have ACL logging for control plane, so we couldn't, you know, uh, basically identify traffic coming from, you know, certain like hosts trying to hit you, you know, with SSH uh, request. You, we wouldn't be able to catch that on the on the control plane. We would on the data plane. So now we've extended that to the all of the platforms uh, with the 10.12 so that we can we can uh, monitor that. And so this is an example here <clears throat> where we set up a control plane ACL and where we're logging, uh, we're, we're doing ACL logging to match against SSH traffic as I kind of just mentioned. And you can see that hit counts are supported and you can see control plane logs for permitted, permitted before SSH sessions. So not only just denies, but also permits are also logged as well. And uh, we mentioned there's the, the five minute uh, period where these get logged. And just a couple extra slides here, just to provide some references for the prior TOIs, uh, specifically around VXLAN GPP, VXLAN, uh, host to switch MACSEC. These are all publicly available, as you can see here through the YouTube links. And for the private VLANs feature, since we've extended it in this release, um, just provided some additional detail as to the links that we have to learn about the feature. You can see we released most of it in 10.8 and 10.9, and now we're pretty close to full parity across the product line. <clears throat> 